Hey, where's all the brown pride folk? How come y'all ain't sticking up for George Zimmerman? What's wrong? Is he not brown enough for y'all? Is it because of his last name or something? Come on, y'all. It ain't like George Zimmerman is Elizabeth Warren or something. You can definitely tell the dude ain't white. I mean, is it just me or, or what happened, man? Where, where's, the, where's the fact that you It seems like they're kicking him under the rug and keeping him away. They saw that. They're like, George Zimmerman's white. Yeah, totally. Eli, what you think? Eli, never mind. You're on the phone. Hey, he's white, man. Listen to his last name, man. He's white. He's not one of us. We're trying to get our own thing, man. And hey, George. George. It's George. It's not Jorge. It's George. George, George Zimmerman. Zimmerman. George. Ain't no kind of. Ain't George no... Zimmerman. <laughs> George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. George Zimmerman. He's, he's German now. He's German. Yeah, he's German. German. Make his name sound as white as you possibly can. I think what's happening. Propaganda. I'm not going to talk much about the events concerning Trayvon Martin and George Zimmerman per se. I'd rather focus on some deeper rooted problems that need to be pulled up and burned. The life of Trayvon Martin has been co-opted, disgraced, and reduced to be an excuse for catharsis for the victim-minded people in a state of mostly self-inflicted discontent. You got people like Toure who think they're so progressive-minded while still dwelling on events long past and trying to compare them to today and then accuse Republicans of dwelling on the past when we correct them on their twisted view of the past they keep dwelling on. And speaking of Toure, Kira Davis gives a most excellent reprimand of Toure's shameless evocation of Emmett Till. But in light of this comparison, I'm going to lean on Emmett Till for another point. Recently, a friend of mine, Christian Hartsock, was assaulted in Brooklyn. I mean, Oakland. Christian Hartsock was the director of my band's music video, Divine Battery. So it ain't like Christian is uncomfortable around black people. All the members of my band are black. So I can't imagine that he gave some sort of attitude that would make the demonstrators think that he was some sort of threat to them. But for no justifiable reason, Christian Hartsock was attacked. But the responses that I've seen are part of why much of the black community sees whites as racist. When I see comments like, typical of blacks, they're brave in a group, but cowardly by themselves, I'm quite disappointed. And I have to ask, so this is a trait that's exclusive to only blacks? Or when they say stupid things like, you know how it is with Mexicans, you fight one bean, you gotta fight the whole burrito. Really? Let's go back to that Emmett Till comparison. If white people are always so brave, then I reckon it should have only taken one of them to torture and kill a 14-year-old kid. And when blacks were being hung, I don't think it was one KKK member that did the job. Examine the name Ku Klux Klan. The word Klan means family, as in a group. So it was a group of cowards, not one brave Klansman. But you got idiots who assign such negatives to another ethnicity, and then wonder why people say, White people are racist. Hey, let's look at Nikki Six as an example. Any more songs. You know why? Because the security assholes in the front are punching you motherfuckers, and you guys deserve better than that. It's a bunch of fucking shit, man. Fuck you, asshole. Right there, bring the lights up. This big fucking asshole. You know what, motherfucker? You're a big fucking Get this 
Now, if Nikki Six was naturally brave, like only white people are, according to these white people who make their stupid statements, Nikki Six wouldn't have been asking an auditorium full of white people to fight a battle he was instigating. It wasn't like Nikki Six said, okay, everybody back off. He's mine. But like too many of you morons, you say and do stupid stuff like this and even defend people like Nikki Six for doing stuff like this, cheering him on and wonder why people think you're racist and try to claim you're not one. Nikki Six tried to come off as indignant because he didn't like the way the security guard treated a female, like Nikki Six is a champion of chivalry. But Nikki Six wasn't as offended by the actions of the security guard as he was by his skin color. If he wasn't, he wouldn't have needed to mention it. He should have only been offended by the actions of the security guard. But Nikki Six just used another black person to glorify himself because that's typically what liberals do. But anyway, humor me again, you white people in question who assume that white folks are the only ethnicity on the planet that doesn't gang up on people. While Nikki Six specifically says there's more of you than there is of him and making sure the audience focus on his skin color. But this ain't all white people. And I thank God I don't pigeonhole entire ethnicities. There's plenty of brave whites, blacks and all in between. And we see them all the time, whether they be in a fire truck or in a fighter plane. Or people like Christian Hartsock, who went into the lion's den to understand what's going on and try to relay it to you. I don't at all think that all whites are racist. I think many are very naive when it comes to race. And I know that with whites, the highest concentration of bigotry and race baiting has always come from those who vote Democrat. And if you liberals can overlook the morbid and murderous, bigoted history of the Democrat Party, the party that has the blood of Martin Luther King on their hands and say that the Democrat Party has changed, then I gotta ask, where's the past for George Zimmerman? He's a Democrat. What crime did he commit that the Democrat Party hasn't instituted? Why are you singling him out for all your rage when you've got a big old Democrat Party you could revolt against who has made it a point to arrest your development? Many in the black community and the so-called liberal minded talk about how much they love to keep it real. But when you do, they get mad. So I reckon Lupe Fiasco is getting a bit of an eye opener for what that's like. Because you got to know, Lupe, It's against the law to disagree with black folks. We don't make mistakes, ever. We're perfect. And if you disagree with anything we do, that means you obviously hate your own race. Even though people who think stuff like that can say the most disagreeable and hateful things against people like Alan West or Condoleezza Rice, and now even you. Disgusting epithets, but somehow these haters aren't the actual self-haters. Y'all, this stuff warrants a lot to unload. We'll pick this up on Kirstie Alley, who withdrew her comment, which read, white people used to make black people drink from separate drinking fountains. Now we just shoot their children. But I want to address it because her comments represent a way a lot of people think. And I'll point out again that liberals consider themselves progressives while always dwelling on their distorted view of the past. And if you're going to do that, then I'll have to remind you that it was Democrats who imposed those segregations. And killing black kids ain't nothing new for Democrats. And while y'all are pretending you're so outraged about black kids getting killed, how about being outraged about them being killed off with abortion? But being surprised by the twisted worldview of liberals would be like being surprised that my butt would burn after eating a bunch of ghost peppers. It's foolishness, man. It's foolishness, you know?